Welcome to chapter 24. We'll talk about nutrition, metabolism, and body temperature regulation. First, we'll talk about nutrients. Nutrients is a substance in food used to promote normal growth, maintenance, and repair. There are five different categories for nutrients. We have carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. Carbohydrates supply energy and are used as building blocks within the body. There are di two different types of sources for carbohydrates. We have sugars, which come from fruit, sugarcane, honey, and milk. And then we have starches that are found in grains and vegetables. Next, we'll talk about proteins. Protein sources are, for example, eggs, milk, fish, and most meats. These are complete proteins that meet all the body's amino acid requirements for tissue maintenance and growth. We also have legumes, nuts, and cereals that are protein rich, but their proteins are nutritionally incomplete because they are low in one or more of the essential amino acids. Animal products contain the highest quality proteins. There are four different types of amino acid usage in the body. First, we have the all or none rule, which is an amino acid needed to make a particular protein must be present in the cell at the same time and in sufficient amounts. If one is missing, the protein cannot be made. Next is caloric intake, which is a diet that must supply sufficient carbohydrate or fat calories for ATP production. Next, we have anabolic hormones, which accelerate protein synthesis and growth. Next, we have nitrogen balance, which is the rate of protein synthesis that equals the rate of protein breakdown and loss. This is a homeostatic state. On to lipids. Lipids have two different types of sources. They have saturated fats, which usually come from animal products such as meats and also dairy foods, and as well as coconuts. Then there are unsaturated fats, which are presented in seeds, nuts, olive oils, and most vegetable oils. There are a few different types of usages in the body from lipids, uh, protective cushioning around the body's organs. It insulates the layer beneath the skin. Also is easy to store, concentrated source of energy. Fats also help the body absorb fat-soluble vitamins. Next, we have vitamins and minerals. Vitamins are organic compounds needed for growth and good health. A balanced diet is the best way to ensure a full vitamin complement in the body. Most vitamins function as coenzymes, which act with an enzyme to accomplish a particular chemical task. There are two different types of vitamins. There are water-soluble vitamins and fat-soluble vitamins. Water-soluble vitamins include B-complex vitamins and vitamin C, with the exception to B12 vitamin. Fat-soluble vitamins, such as A, D, E, and K, are absorbed together with other lipids in the gut. Next, we have minerals. Minerals are like vitamins, are not used for fuel, but work with other nutrients to ensure a smoothly functioning body. Most minerals are ionized in the body's fluids or bound to organic compounds to form phospholipids, hormones, and various proteins. For example, iron. Iron is essential to the oxygen-binding hemo hemoglobin. Next up is metabolism. Metabolism is, a nutri is nutrients that becomes collectively involved in chemical reactions. Different types of processes are anabolic, anabolic this is a reaction that builds up smaller molecules to make them larger. Catabolic is a reaction that breaks down larger molecules to make them smaller. 
Then there's oxidation react reduction reaction and coenzymes. This is energy that is transferred to a series of other molecules that mostly are mostly to ADP to form ATP. Four different type or two different types of ATP synthesis are <clears throat> substrate level phosphorylation, which occurs because high energy bonds attach attach to phosphate groups, so substrates are even more unstable. This happens in the cytoplasm and the mitochondria. Oxidative phosphorylation is released energy that is eventually captured in ATP bonds during cellular respira respiration. This is you or this is in the or on the cristae of the mitochondria. Next up is carbohydrate metabolism. This is a molecule of glucose broken down in to make 32 ADP. Oxidation of glucose. Glycolysis is anaerobic. It is the breakdown of glucose by enzymes and releasing energy in pyruvic acid. You, glycolysis does not need oxygen. It has a net gain of two ADPs each time it is broken down. In the absence of oxygen, pyruvic acid turns into lactic acid. When oxygen becomes available, lactic acid is turned into pyruvic acid again and then enters the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle finishes the breakdown of glucose and makes the rest of the 30 ADPs. The electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation is on the cristae of the mitochondrion. Electron transport chain components are proteins bound to metal add-ons, like flavins and cytochromes. Respiratory enzyme complexes pass electrons along to lower and lower energy levels until finally given to oxygen. H2O is formed. Electronic energy carried by electrons is used to transport protons into the intramembrane space, which creates an electrochemical proton gradient that stores potential energy used to make ATP later. ATP synthesis or synthesizes use and energy from the flow of electrons to add a high energy phosphate to ADP, which forms ATP. For each pyruvic acid into the electron transport chain, 10 to 11 ATPs are formed. The summary of the products from one glucose molecule of the ab in the absence of in the presence of oxygen. Other oxidations of glucose are glycogenesis, which is the making of glycogen, glycogenolysis, which is breaking glycogen apart and storing sugars, aka carb loading. Gluconeogenesis, which is making glucose out of stuff that was not glucose before. Lipid metabolism is oxidation of glycerol and fatty acids, which are neutral fats that are used for energy. Beta oxidation, which is chopping up fatty acids into groups. Lipogenesis is making lipids. This is where the AT ATP levels are high. Lipolysis is the breakdown of lipids. Ketogenesis is equal to ketoacidosis, which is too many carbs in the body. Synthesis of structural materials that are all made from lipids. Membranes, myelin sheath, lipoproteins, thromboplastin, and cholesterol. Absorptive and post-absorptive states, events, and controls. Absorptive state is during and just after eating, most ana anabolic then catabolic. Nutrient groups and after their destinies. Carbohydrates are glucose converting into glycogen. Triglycerides are stored in the muscle and liver. Amino acids are carried to the liver that make pro and make proteins. Hormonal controls 
insulin, which lowers the blood sugar level. For example, diabetes mellitus. Post-absorptive state is fasting. Primary goal is to keep glucose in normal range and glucagon in control. Sources of blood glucose. Glycogenolysis in liver first. Glycogenolysis in skeletal muscles second to keep blood sugar normal. Lipolysis in liver and adipose tissue, which is the breaking down of fats. Catabolism of cellular proteins is the breaking down of proteins. Glucose sparing is when the body uses protein and fats to save glucose for the brain. Controls are hormonal, glucagon is major, growth hormone, cortisol, and thyroxine. Neut neural is the SNS, sympathetic nervous system, releases epinephrine. This dumps glu glucose for ATP production. Body energy balance, regulation of food intake. One, nutrient signals related to energy storage. This is where glucose levels are higher and hunger is lower. Hormones is the CCK, which lowers the hunger. Ghrelin, which is hungry hormone, releases released for hunger. Body temperature, cold, activates hunger reflexes. And psychology, in the mind. Metabolic rate and body heart production. Metabolic rate is energy output. Basal metabolic rate, BMR, is how much energy when resting and not eating eating for 12 hours. Total metabolic rate, TMR, is energy used for all activities. Measuring, we could use a calorimeter. This is where you get dunked into water to bring up your temperature. Or a respirometer. This is how much oxygen you breathe. Factors influencing BMR are age, gender, stress levels, mass, or mass to surface area ratio. Factors influencing TMR is food intake. Clinical problems are hypothyroidism, which raises your BMR, and hypothyroidism is a lower BMR. Roles of the liver in metabolism. The liver metabolizes, stores, and detoxifies nutrients. It also plays a major role in regulating plasma cholesterol level, levels. High-density lip lipoproteins are good cholesterol. This transports extra cholesterol and brings it back to the liver. Low-density lipoproteins are bad. They transport cholesterol out to the peripher peripheral tissues. Very low-density lipoproteins take lipids to adipose tissue and unload triglycerides and become LDLS, which is low-density lipoproteins. Climomicrons are transported, a transported form into the bloodstream. Regulation of plasma cholesterol levels. Saturated causes increase in cholesterol. Unsaturated causes decrease in cholesterol. Regulation of body temperature. The hypothalamus is the main integrating center for thermoregulation. Together, the heat loss center and the heat promoting center make up the brain's thermoregulatory center. Peripheral thermal receptors are the measurement of temperature outside of the body, and central thermal receptors are the measurement of core temperature, of the core temperature. Heat promoting mechanism is the constriction of the capillaries in the skin, which cause you to shiver, also causes increase in thyroid production and increase in BMR. Heat loss mechanism is the dilation of blood vessels and makes you sweat. Fever is macrophages that release pyrogens, which stimulate heat-promoting system. 
Clinical problems are hypothermia, which is heat stroke, is the cause of being in a hot environment for a prolonged period of time, and hypothermia, which is being in an environment that is too cold for a prolonged period of time.